Hi, I'm Jason Browning, the Associate Pastor at Westmore Church of God, here with Pastor Kelvin Page, our lead pastor, and we'd like to thank you for joining us today for the Pastor's Extra. Pastor, we've been talking the last few weeks about unseen realities and the different things that are going on that we don't see with the physical eye, and yesterday was uh, one of the most interesting topics. There's been a lot of people from Westmore uh, today really kind of buzzing about the things that you've been talking about yesterday. Yesterday, I'm take that. Yeah, yeah, it was great. <laughs> you, you talked about angels yesterday. And, you know, that's something we don't hear a lot about. And um, just briefly, talk to us a little bit about the role that angels play in the life of the believer, what the Scripture says, and, and yeah. kind of where all that falls. Well, I mean, I think first, the passage we were looking at was Daniel chapter 10, and um, and the story there is is very simple. Um, Daniel had been praying and uh, very burdened about the situation that God's people were in. They had been taken captive by Babylon. This is a long 70-year captivity. And so in the middle of that, he, he is so burdened and, and, and hurting over all of this, carrying this thing that the prophet decides he's going to cry out to God about it. And what he does, Daniel 10 tells us that the Lord sent a messenger. And that's really the theme of Daniel 10, a messenger. And he sends a messenger, and that messenger is in the form of an angel. The angel is intercepted in the heavens by the prince of Persia, uh, which we believe to be a demonic force. And there's the struggle in the heavens between this demonic force, fallen angels, and the angel who is a messenger. And... Um, after 21 days, which, by the way, the Bible says that God had answered his prayer on the first day he prayed, which is a very interesting thing to talk about. Yeah. But he answered his prayer on the first day. 21 days later, God sends Michael, uh, the fighting machine. He's a warrior angel. And he comes hurling through the, the heavens and binds up the prince of Persia so that the messenger couldn't get on through to Daniel to relay the message that God was sending. And so... Out of that, we did talk about these un this unseen reality in the heavens, and it involves angels. Mm -hmm. When we when we look in Scripture, we find angels who are uh, musicians. We find Gabriel. It is Gabriel who will step out and blow the trumpet uh, on that day, that glorious day we're all looking forward to. It, we have uh, we have uh, messenger angels like the one in Daniel chapter ten. We find messenger angels in other places. We have mighty warrior angels that do battle, such as in uh, 2 Kings chapter 8, where uh, God lined up uh, warrior, warrior angels up on the top of the mountain, and, and when the Syrian army saw them, they turned and fled. Mm -hmm. um, we, have, uh, we have angels who are guardian angels. The scripture talks about that. Uh, he will give them watch over us, they're protective in nature. Um, there is a lot of different types of angels. You have singing angels. You have, uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the host of angels who formed a choir and announced the good news to the shepherds mm -hmm. out on the backside of the desert uh, that the Christ child's coming, the Savior of the world. And so angels play, have played historically an important role. I think over 300 times right. angels are mentioned in Scripture. So we have to give a certain amount of credence to the idea that perhaps angels are still with us. Um, people may think that's strange, but isn't it in Hebrews 13, chapter 13, that says we shall uh, or very well could entertain angels and be unaware of it. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's something that's uh, uh, marvelous about that, and I think it, it is part of that unseen reality that we don't often think about a whole lot. You know, people, when they, when they talk about angels and they read about angels, you know, because it's they are such an unseen reality, it's difficult sometimes for us to find the proper place theologically and within our own personal walk to place angels. Talk a little bit about the dangers of of getting angels out of place in the sense of either uh, placing too much emphasis or not enough emphasis on. Yeah, them. I think the church has been guilty through the years of chasing fads and trends and and I think that that really has destroyed some beautiful things in scripture that need to be looked at. Mm -hmm. I, th I think not that it's a beautiful thing but I think you know we've come through the days when people had a demon under every rock or behind every wall there was a demonic uh, spirit that needed to be dealt with and, and, and I think it really got imbalanced and, and, and a spiritual truth that there are such a thing as good and evil spirits 
got got way too far out there and then we forget about Jesus and fear starts coming and we forget that we're victorious and books were sold and it got all tied up into sensationalism and, and all of that. I think on the flip side people can do that kind of thing with uh, I think they can do that with prophecy. I think they can do that with angels. I think they can do that with a lot of things. And it's too bad because I think our focus needs to be on, on Jesus and what our Lord does for us. And yet we also need to look at how he operates in the world, how he keeps order in the world, how he functions in the world. I think we do need to know certain things about them. I, I think that we've got to be very cautious uh, that in, 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 where zealous people will pick up on a scriptural truth like this, and Hollywood will even do that, and carry it beyond the realm that God intended us to, 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 to uh, you know, in, in our views, it gets too far, it goes out there too far. And so I think we have to accept the fact that there are angels, mm -hmm. and I think we have to be truthful about what Scripture says about them, and then be careful not to, not to take that beyond what we do know, because we don't know everything. Mm -hmm. And I think that does cause a little bit of a struggle. We, we have these peaks, so to speak, where we can kind of peek into this unseen reality and the Lord will give us this little mm -hmm. insight and we and we see certain things, but we don't know all of the, the mystery of that. And we don't know all of the unseen. Mm -hmm. He's just revealed enough to us to let us know that there is a certain amount of reality that's there. Sure, it's obvious that, you know, God has created angels for mm -hmm. a purpose. Yeah. And just like all of God's creation, part of that purpose is pointing us to Him and living in right relationship with Him. That's a cool way to put it. I think if, if, if we can understand that angels are there to work on behalf of our Lord, uh, just as there are demonic forces that work on behalf of, of the enemy, when we call it the devil or Satan, I, th I think, I think the, the cool thing is to understand that we, we know our identity in God and our and, and we, we have a sense of security that we not only have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit looking out over us and for us, but we have, if he desires to send messages or he desires to protect us or he desires to do things for us, that there is this unseen reality, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps a seen reality, we may not even know it. Yeah. There is this reality that God has a whole host of angels are in place that uh, can do mighty things on behalf of uh, his wishes. Sure. And we can well, take confidence in that. Absolutely. Well, let me put you on the spot. Have you ever encountered an angel? Or have you ever, do you have any um, stories that kind of hit close to home with regards to angels and experiences about angels? I personally, I personally can't say that I have. I would have to admit that that if I have, it, it's been, I was unaware. Like like Hebrews 13 would, 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 would speak to that. Um, I do, I do know in my family, my grandmother, who was a very balanced individual, she loved the Lord and a person of faith um, in, in, in ministry and in church, uh, she would look you dead in the eye and uh, uh, put her hand on a stack of Bibles if she thought that would help you understand. She believes that her and her three children who uh, had an encounter with an angel, they didn't see the angel, but they were... Uh, the family was troubled and the children were small and uh, there was a lot of poverty and uh, uh, in the middle of a blizzard, a snowstorm in upper Michigan, um, uh, they were hungry, had no food in the cupboards. It was a sad, sad situation. And with tears streaming down her face far more than once as a child, I heard that story told of how she believes an angel showed up and put groceries on the outside of the door. And that was a day when there was no snowmobiles and the driveway was about 400 yards off the main road. And uh, to get there, you would have had to work through about four foot of snow. Yeah. And, um, and so as a result, um, when they opened the door, um, there was a bag of groceries there and no tracks, no, uh, no, no footprints, no vehicle tracks, no nothing. And um, to the day she died, and my mother, who was nine years old still, before she passed away, would say that they all believed an angel showed up. Wow. Well, thanks for, thanks for having the courage to talk about a topic like that in the pulpit. And uh, thanks for calling us to be aware of the unseen realities. And, and thank you for joining us today with Pastors Extra. We'd encourage you uh, to visit the Westmore website at www.westmorecog.org to learn more about the things that are happening here at Westmore. You can also see some of uh, the other sermons that Pastor Page has preached. And again, thanks for being with us today, and God bless you. Thanks.